There is no government assistance with a self-diagnosis. So what did her diagnosis take from your child's diagnosis? Yo, watch your feet. I'm about to step over the toes. So let me get this straight. A diagnosis is only valid if it comes from someone else, even if that someone else is a stranger on the internet. With no credentials, mind you, i.e. the internet calling Joe Budden a narcissist, or when the owner of Milk and Honey said that I know y'all not taking advice from some autistic dude after Keith Lee left a review, who has never said publicly himself that he's autistic, so I don't know where y'all getting that, and that's nasty that y'all doing that. Or saying that this person has ADHD, or oh, my favorite one, y'all love, y'all love love, love, love diagnosing people as being on the spectrum in the comments as an insult. But for whatever reason, an autism diagnosis in particular needs to come from someone else that's not me, right? Why is it okay for a stranger to tell me about me, even if that stranger is a practitioner? And that's the thing. We got to start using the word practitioner and stop saying professional. Because if you've ever been to the doctor to be assessed for any type of medical or mental condition, disorder, or disability, whichever you like to call it, then you know how little time they actually spend in the room with you, examining you, making assessments based on what they saw at that time versus someone who's actually done hours, and I mean months of research, on various disorders. A good practitioner will tell you they can only diagnose what they see themselves. Hate to break it to you, but all diagnoses as an adult, no matter if it's a stomach ache, foodborne illness, the flu, a cold, ADHD, depression, bipolar, but especially autism, as an adult, starts with a self-diagnosis. But tell me, when was the last time you went to a doctor for a cough or a cold to confirm that you were sick? No, let's be real. So you paid the copay if you have insurance or the $350 to be seen by a doctor for 15 minutes who was likely late and rushed you. Or did you know yourself well enough to say, this is the flu, this is what I need and proceed to do what made you feel better. I used to think that an autism diagnosis was about being accepted, but I know now in actuality, it's about me accepting myself for what I can do and not being so hard on myself about the shit I struggle with. And I didn't want to make this video. I want to make sure I make this clear. This is not about her, but it's so gross how y'all casually diagnose people with things that you are not a practitioner of diagnosing based on characters you've seen on TV or the only one version of that disorder that you you know, because y'all love throwing around that word narcissist. Y'all love saying that Joe Button is a narcissist. Y'all don't realize that these conditions and disorders are genetic and environmentally induced. A 2012 study found that genes cause less than 23 percent of NPD, suggesting that your environment, such as parenting styles, culture, childhood experiences, and parent-child dynamics, play a much more important role of you having NPD. So as far as the genetic portion goes, most adults don't find out they're autistic until they have a child that is assessed and it's confirmed to be autistic. Around 80 percent of autism cases are linked to genetic mutations. However, the inheritance source is usually unknown. You can have an autistic child and the parents not be autistic. But why is it important to deny a person's experience? And I'm going to get more into that when I talk about this Good Times cartoon that y'all are sowing your feelings about. Because a lot of people have a hard time understanding the term spectrum. Perhaps it would help to know that the term spectrum was first used to describe the rainbow of colors in visible light after passing through a prism. Take a color like blue. This is blue and this is blue. But they are not the same blue. It can be tricky to see the differences, but these are two different blues also, though they look similar. This blue is assigned this code. To be this blue, it must be this code, because even one digit different, well, it's not that same blue. They have some overlapping traits and some things that don't register for the other blues. Same with autism. Just to be clear, I'm not defending Amanda. I'm offended that y'all are denying another person's experience as someone who has had to get a second opinion with a doctor saying my four times a year sinus infections were normal and just to take some over-the-counter medication to clear it up. That when I complained of blurry vision in my left eye that I just needed a new prescription and not that my cornea was scratched and needed a routine to repair the damage. But when I was self-diagnosed with autism after a year of silent research, finally getting the courage to ask for a referral to see a doctor and be misdiagnosed with BPD, that insurance paid for by having to save enough to pay out of pocket $9,988 and get a diagnosis from a second doctor who actually saw me and not my trauma. This is why we need more black doctors. But before we get there, we got to work on the black community understanding just because you know someone who presents this way doesn't mean that's the only way that shows up. Are you loud, ratchet, and unemployed with six kids all wearing the latest Jordans and knockout Gucci? No, that ain't you? Okay, well, some people are. So just because it's not you, shh, you're too loud. Self-diagnosis and being made up are not the same thing. Because she self-diagnosed, she did not make up having autism. She took questionnaires that confirmed her suspicions of being autistic. Autism doesn't come with superpowers. It didn't come with a group of friends, with a support number. There's no government assistance with a self-diagnosis. So what did her diagnosis take from your child's diagnosis? But what's really important is that all medical information is private. Anything a person chooses to share with you is their info to share. You may ask questions, but that person doesn't have to answer. Go ask your doctor if you want to know. To this comment, 
I'd like to say I'm glad you and your child had the fortune of knowing when he was one. Because many of us in our 40s, we grew up with parents who instilled the fear of those people, speaking of white folk, who will see you misbehaving, will call and have you arrested for acting up. So don't you get in this store acting a fool. So we learned to mask at an early age. You know how hard it was for somebody who suffered at the hands of being smacked for keeping my hands in my comfortable pockets at the age of six because... I would be assumed for stealing. I'm glad that you learned of this for your son at such a young age because he was able to be himself and not be corrected for it, I'm almost sure. Some of us grew up scripting because of the strict religion we were raised in. In fact, your child has probably never had to mask and didn't go through that phase of being picked on because they were being different in class with others that didn't look like them or act like them because they were in classes catered to their learning style with others that were like them. It's quite interesting the way that your bias leaped out when you threw out an insult at Amanda while also acknowledging that we all have different personalities. So because you've never come across an autistic person that's combative, and that's your word, by the way, because... Um, wait a minute. Hi. Nowhere in my video did I use that word, did she use that word, or the other young lady that you see in that video. You also went to speak on her features that I didn't bring up and that weren't mentioned in the video that you were commenting on. But you felt enough about her pretty privilege to add it. Again, after your insult as a claim to why she's successful. It's not on topic. I mentioned our standing in our position, not bending based on my own interaction with her. Do I know if she uses the same glass to drink out of despite having several to choose from? Or if she eats the same meals on rotation? Or if she rubs her fingers? Or if she toe walks? as a way to stem. Nope, but I shared what I thought it about her while sticking to what I knew about her and how she comes across to others. What I did was something called relating to a person when you see some traits of yourself in them or vice versa. What I'm doing now is breaking it down further so it's clear and it's not misunderstood with you placing words in places where they weren't before. That it made sense that she came to that self-diagnosis because I too rub people the wrong way. Because I lack patience for slow talkers and people who won't get to the point and I show it on my face. Being alone is way better than being around others feeling misunderstood. I've learned over time to accept compliments, but didn't understand them because yes, this is a nice hoodie because I picked it out having that same exact thought. So we agree. I didn't make it. So why do you need a thank you for your observation? It's those things that you were taught that never make sense even with the rules. A therapist will usually see you on a weekly basis for a 50 minute session building a rapport with you. Some therapists are against placing any significance on diagnosis altogether. They see it as limiting progress and the one being diagnosed staying in a state of negative perceptions and stigmas attached to them. A neurologist will spend one hour with you after you see two different psychologists in two four hour appointments scheduled a month apart. You will return for the results, that you'll receive from a different person who you didn't test with. They are seeing you as you show up that day. If you've understood anything that I've said up to this point, then you'd see how those observations can vary depending on the person's age and the one doing the observations experience with those in that demographic. The same nearly 400 questionnaire I took online was given to me in paper form in one of those four hour appointments. Yes, it's just one component, but if it's good enough for the practitioner to use, then a self-diagnosis is valid. If y'all actually want some more information on that particular portion of what the testing process is like, then you need to leave me a comment in this video and say, yes, I would like to know what the testing process is like. Because without that, I'm not posting any more videos on this topic. Y'all are wild and I'm, I'm, I'm tired of talking about this. That, that's for real. I'm not here to gatekeep autism and I'm not saying if you take the 10 question test that you are autistic. But if you take the 10 question and then the 30 and then the 300, provided that the score suggests you move on to the next one and the next one, Consider seeing a practitioner after doing your own research. In conclusion, an autism diagnosis didn't make you autistic. You were autistic before diagnosed. An autistic person undiagnosed is still autistic, just undiagnosed. Who cares what others think? They're going to have their own opinions anyway. Like this video for me and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you later. Oh shit, how the fuck did I forget OCD? Y'all love that one. You don't know nothing about that shit. Stop it. You got your own opinion of me. I cannot give a fuck.